So number 15 reads, if ax plus 2 times bx plus 7 equals 15x squared plus cx plus 14 and a plus b is equal to 8, what are the possible values for two possible values for c? So what I'm going to first do is write out this entire section of the problem out again and keep in mind that there is this other source of information. So ax plus 2 multiplied by bx plus 7 equals 15x squared plus cx plus 14. Now, it's not super clear what the next step should be, but my what I kind of tend to do whenever I'm not really sure what to do next is oftentimes expand or factor, depending on which way you can go. So in this case, the only thing that we can really do here is expand to try to see if we can solve for this. So I'm gonna expand it, which means FOIL. So multiply each factor in one parenthesis by the two other factors in the other parentheses. So that gives you ABX plus two, I mean ABX squared, sorry, plus 2BX plus 7AX plus 14 is equal to 15X squared plus CX plus 14. Now, the first thing I notice is that we, the only whole numbers here on both sides of the equation are 14, which means that the other factors have to be equivalent to each other. So what I mean is that um, AB has to be equal to 15, and everything that is not an X factor here has to be equal to C. So what I'm gonna do is simplify it as if every factor corresponding with the other factor on the other side of the equation is exactly equivalent. So ABX squared plus, I'm going to factor out um, the x from these two um, terms. So 2b plus 7a plus 14 is equal to 15x squared plus cx plus 14. So now I have to create a systems of equations. So I'm given the first equation that a plus b is equal to 8. This is equation 1. Then um, I can assume that a, b is equal to 15 because these both are the kind of the coefficient uh, coefficients of um, the x squared term. So a b is equal to 15. Now I can also assume that this is equivalent to c because these are the coefficients of the x terms. So 2b plus 7a is equal to c. So the thing is that the number of equations that you have in a system should be equal to the number of terms or variables that you're trying to solve for, and therefore, and that's how you can solve for all of the variables. Um, so for example, we have three variables here, a, b, and c, and we have three equations. So we should be able to solve for all of the equations. So first things first, um, I kind of immediately, when I look at this, these systems, because the numbers are fairly simple, the first thing that pops in my head is that the numbers 3 and 5, when multiplied together, give you 15, and when added together, they give you 8. So in this case, when a is 3, b is 5, and when a is 5, b is 3. Because addition and multiplication both, it doesn't matter um, you know, whether 8 or b is 3 or 5. Um, and there are two, obviously two values for c, so there has to be two values for a and b as well, or two kind of combinations for a, b, and c. So what I'm going to do is plug each of these uh, scenarios into equation 3. So 2 times 3 when s plus 7 times 5 is equal to 6 plus 35, which gives you 41. And that's the first scenario. And for the second scenario, 2 times 5 plus 7 times 3 gives you the second scenario. 10 plus 21 equals 31. So these are your two possible values of C, and that matches with the letter D. So D is the correct answer. So the next question, number 16, there are no answer choices, and so we kind of have to figure it out numerically and bubble it in on the answer sheet that um, kind of the grid that's given to you, the numerical grid. So if it reads that if t is greater than zero and t squared minus four is equal to zero, then what is the value of t? And so firstly, we just solve this equation to see what the value of t would be. And then we'll kind of look at what it means if t is greater than zero. So t squared minus four equals zero. I can move four to the other side. So t squared is equal to four. And so when I square root both sides, I get t is equal to plus or minus 2. Now, 
If t is greater than zero, that means t cannot be a negative number or zero. That means that t cannot be negative two, so the value of t can only be positive two. So positive two is the correct answer. The number next question, number 17, reads, um, a summer camp counselor wants to find the length x in feet across the lake. The length represented by a, b, e, b, b, d, and c, d on the sketch was determined to be um, 1,800 feet, 1,400 feet, 700, and 800 feet, respectively. And A, C, and D, E intersect with B, and angles A, B, and C, D, B have the same measure. What is the value of X? So I'm going to kind of draw a simplified version of this diagram here. And so um, basically, this is my diagram. So A, X, E, B, D, and C. So but let's look at the angles first. So it says that A, E, B, and C, D, B are the same. So A, E, B, and C, D, B are uh, equivalent. And um, it tells you that A, B is 1,800 feet. Um, it tells you that E, B is 1,400 feet. So you just kind of write it right on the diagram there. And then it tells you that BD is 700. And it tells you that um, CD is 800. Okay, so, um, and then it's asking you for the value of X. So the first thing to know is that these two triangles are going to be similar triangles. And so how do we know that? Is that we know that firstly, they share this particular angle. And then these two angles have to be alike or equivalent because they're opposite each other. And so you know that all three of the angles have to be the same because triangles only have three angles. And so if two are congruent, then the other one has to be congruent as well. So that's kind of how I no notate that um, they're going to be congruent. And so therefore you know that the way it's oriented, um, x is going to be similar to 800. So 800 over x. And you have um, 1,400 and 700 that are going to be similar to each other. And so um, this, so 700 and 1,400. So this is obviously a one to two ratio. So therefore, um, your x value is going to be 1,600 feet. So you can bubble that into your answer sheet. So in questions 18, system of equations, they're asking you to solve for the value of x. You're given two variables and two equations, so you know that you can solve for the variables given. So, because we're solving for x, uh, I want to cancel out y, because that means that if I cancel out y, I'll immediately solve for x and save a lot of time. So in order for me to cancel out y, I have to multiply equation one by negative two to give me the following. So negative two x minus two y is equal to 18. And be careful when you're doing um, this multiplication because it is a negative number and that might lead to silly mistakes. And just rewrite equation two as is underneath. So x plus two y is equal to negative 25. Remember in a systems of equations, you have to have um, an equivalent like m number um, but opposite sign to cancel. So negative 2y and positive 2y can easily cancel. And then just subtract or add, sorry, add write down. Uh, uh, add the numbers um, in the column. So you get negative x is equal to negative 7. And so um, that means that x is equal to 7. So this is your answer on the answer sheet. For um, number 19, it says that in a right triangle, one angle measures x degrees where sine of x is equal to 4 over 5, and what is cosine of 90 minus x degrees. So you have a right angle here, right? And you, um, here's your right angle, and you have one that is x degrees. So um, it's, so, so what is sine? Sine of x degrees is going to be 4 over 5. And sine is basically the opposite over the hypotenuse, right? So let's just say that this is your x degrees. And this is your 90 minus x degrees. Um, so you have this, so basically you have 90 minus, 90 minus x, your 90 degree angle and your x degrees in this um, right triangle here. And sine of x degrees um, is equal to 4 over 5. So that means that the opposite is 4 and the hypotenuse is 5. 
And so if you remember your um, common right triangles, um, you have, this is a three, four, five right triangle, so that means that this side has to be three. So what they're asking you for is for the cosine of the angle that is not the x degrees and not the right angle. So basically 90 minus x degrees. So let's just call this like A, B, and C. So if A was your x degree, had, was, had an angle measure of x degrees, B had an angle measure of 90 minus x degrees. So it's asking you for the cosine of B. Cosine would be um, the adjacent over the hypotenuse, right? So that would basically be 4 over 5. And this is just kind of reiterating a common rule that sine of one angle in a right angle, in a right triangle, um, is equivalent to the cosine of the other um, angle in a right triangle. And so therefore your answer is 4 over 5, and that's what you can, so you basically can bubble in 4 over 5 or 0 0.8 on your answer chat document. Now for your next question, number 20, um, it's asking you if A is equal to 5 over the square root of 2 and 2A is equal to the square root of, two, square root of 2x, what is the value of x? So um, first I'm going to rewrite what we're given here. So A is equal to 5 over 2, I mean 5 root 2, and 2A is equal to root 2x. So um, one thing to note is I'm just going to convert this into 2a, and so I can equate these two things together. So if a is equal to 5 root 2, then 2a is equal to 10 root 2, because I multiplied both sides of the equation uh, by 2. And 2a is equal to root 2x. So that means that 2a is equal to 2a, so these two factors are equal to each other, so 10 root 2 is equal to root 2x. So Basically, when you say root 2x, root 2x is equal to root 2 times root x is equal to 10 root 2. So you can cancel the root 2s from both sides. So 10 is equal to root of x. And um, x, so basically root x, when you square it, you have to square the other side of the equation as well. So x is equal to 100. And therefore, you can bubble in 100 on your answer document. So there you have it, um, this particular section on the, on the first practice exam, and thank you for listening to my solutions for this particular section.